right. Well, I'm Eric Pilgrim with Arvig's. Hello, hello, Tom. <laughs> um, Eric Pilgrim with Arvig. Um, I've been doing security here for about six years now, um, and you know the one thing about our security business is that it's really changed over the years. I mean, the technology has just expanded from you know traditional type security to uh, running any system from your smartphones, your iPads, computers from anywhere in the world. And so that's kind of the neat thing about um, you know the, the security world and all technology right now. It's just ever changing. So, um, so today we'll touch on a few things. Um, we'll kind of talk about our uh, camera systems. Um, so our surveillance systems. Uh, we have access control systems that we do quite a bit. So that would be like door entry type systems. So, you know, whether that's for a small little uh, commercial project or apartments to to Wadena Wellness Center to you know hospitals and schools, those sorts of things. Um, and then I do have a little little demonstration on our uh, home security too. So every business person has a house, so we might as well talk about a little little home security too. Um, and the security on the, for your home, again, has really evolved from just traditional arming, disarming locally to be able to turn on lights, unlock doors, raise and lower your thermostats, um, and then view cameras, all from smartphones, iPads, computers. So I'll kind of show you a few of those things and uh, just kind of take you through here. Um, Feel free to ask questions at any time. You know, don't don't worry about interrupting me. Uh, the more questions you have, that'll lead into different conversations and maybe help you uh, understand the systems a little bit more and relate them to your everyday use. So, feel free to ask questions at any time. So, um, I'll probably just show you our camera system. Just I'll kind of just do a chunk at a time. So we'll kind of talk cameras right away. Um, the camera world has really evolved again with the technology side of it from analog cameras moving into more of an IP megapixel type camera. So what that kind of means to you is that the clarity of these systems has um, basically evolved into being an HD type picture. So you've all seen the news at night, and um, I'm just going to get some video up here. You guys have all seen the pictures at uh, on the news of when somebody breaks into somewhere, and you're like, well, you can't even see what that person looks like, you know? So how are we going to prosecute anybody, those sorts of things? Well, the video today is, um, you know, like HD type quality. And so that allows you to like also zoom in on smaller details throughout a large image. And so we'll show you some of this. Um, if you look on here, we have Ernie's in Staples, Minnesota. We have Friesen's in Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. Or excuse me, yeah, in Detroit Lakes. Did I say Ernie's in Detroit Lakes? Staples, perfect then. And then Friesen's in Detroit Lakes and Nearson's in Detroit Lakes. And so with this technology, you're able to manage multiple locations all from the same platform. Okay, So I can pull up cameras from Staples, Detroit Lakes, New York Mills, if I had a system there, and I can view them all on one platform. So that's kind of a, a, a very nice convenience factor for a lot of business people. Um, you know, again, this can be your home here. It could be... And then also I maybe have a system down in your home in Arizona, you know, so you can view both systems from anywhere there. So this is, um, this is a five megapixel camera. Um, usually we use ones, threes, fives, and tens. So the higher the number, the better clarity the camera is. The more power you also have the zoom. So like this camera here is a five, and this is kind of what some of the new technology is really good at. You're able to come in here, if you look at the power play, you know, it really hasn't changed. We can zoom around this image and go wherever we want. We'll go see if we can get this license plate right now. Um, there is reasons 
there is reasons why we have so much of the area covered and so that if it's kind of dark or anything like that we can um, you know as this vehicle is pulling in or pulling out we can get a closer shot of license plate I got 446 looks like G U E so this is a fairly large area that this camera is covering so we're covering three stations with one camera whereas before you would have to basically have one camera per you know pump station and so being able to cover a larger area like this kind of cuts down on cost cuts down on the cameras those sorts of things but I'm just gonna scroll across the street here so from where this camera is mounted to this building across the street that's Highway 10 there four lanes of Highway 10 all that parking lot all the way up to that restaurant bar that's probably probably more than a football field away so that's kind of the clarity that you can get out of these higher megapixel cameras so that looked pretty good for how far it is away okay now if somebody was over there you'd be able to identify their pickup or their vehicle you know things like that but you're probably not going to be able to identify the person that far away maybe you'd be able to tell what they're wearing and those sorts of things but um, you know again that's a long long ways away so so for example here here's an office shot um, with our systems we don't have to use the same camera throughout the whole entire system we can pick and choose whatever's going to work for that customer okay so like this for example is a one megapixel a one megapixel covering this area is going to do a fine job for this customer because it's not a big huge area and we don't need to really zoom in on you know any little details so this is what a one megapixel looks like in an office setting can you, zoom in on this? you bet we can zoom in on this yep yep we'll go over there so you know it does it is going to distort a lot quicker than a five yep <laughs> so that guy there let's see what are, what are, we'll move around here a little bit more you know just so that you can see there's that flower you know so so one you know if we needed a facial shot like say this was a cash register right here and this was a customer approaching at a C store for example you know this is a nice shot okay if we wanted this individual again if this was a C store and as customers approach you know we don't necessarily need to see this big huge area in that environment we we, we would zoom this camera manually in around maybe the desk area there what we would do when we installed the camera at your, at your business is that we, we it's called a verifocal lens so we take that verifocal lens and we zoom it in manually on the area that you want to see okay so once it's in on that area now you can take the digital, digital zoom off your computer and then zoom in even tighter does that make sense okay so you start by working with the customer to see what area you want okay so then we get that area with the camera okay and then we can zoom in so optical versus digital those are your two types of and that's kind of my job is to determine which camera is going to work best to get that area for you usually a lot of businesses um, will 30 days is kind of a typical number we like to hit um, 30 days of storage so you're able to go back and view 30 days of recordings okay um, do we have to do 30 no we can do 15 we can do 10 whatever we want to do but 30 is a good number so that gives you a little bit of time if somebody comes back to you and says I had this incident that happened two weeks ago okay well let me go back in my video and see what really happened okay so 30 is typical the most we've ever done is six months Wow yeah six months <laughs> it was about 32 terabytes which is a huge number so um, but yes there's a lot of different things we can do with the cameras to help hit those numbers too um, like lots of cameras they will um, record at anywhere from one frame per second all the way up to 30 
And so what that means to you is that that camera takes um, one picture every second, or if it's 30 frames per second, it takes 30 pictures every second. What's real time? Real time, mm, roughly 12-ish, somewhere right around there. Most of our systems, we do around nine, nine or 10. That's smooth. Uh, so to our eyes, you know, that's, that's what we want. So we usually build our systems around nine or 10 frames per second. And then whether we're doing continuous or motion recording. So you can dictate, yep, you can dictate from camera to camera. You can dictate uh, hour to hour. You can set up a schedule. So seven in the morning, it starts recording continuously till five o'clock at night. And then at 5.01, it goes to motion recording. So that's what some of our businesses do. This one, I'll show you. We can go into our configuration. And now the configuration allows me to go into these systems and make any changes that I'd like to to the system from, again, anywhere in the world. So that one we were looking at, um, that was the uh, main office, right? So up on here, you see this one set up at 10 frames per second right here. Yep. So it's HD resolution, which is you know a one megapixel. Um, your IP address, MAC address, these are just things that maybe you know not a big deal to you guys. But I can also come in here and make uh, changes to the brightness and con contrast of the camera, right from my laptop. Okay. I can also set up like video mass. So let's just say you're watching your, one of your sidewalks coming into your business and there's a tree or a bush out there that was blowing in the wind and it was also always setting the system off to record. I can come up there, we'll say it's up in this corner, so I can highlight this and now I can block that tree off so that the camera doesn't see the tree. So we're not wasting recording space. So a lot of, a lot of neat things that you can do with the system that you know, just makes everything smooth for you and customizable, those sorts of things. So this is just a nice little tool that I like to show people. I would say most of our systems are going to be, you know, our smaller systems are going to be like a one terabyte okay. with like five, six cameras. Somewhere around there is going to hit that number. Um, if we're talking a dozen cameras, we're probably right around 10, you know, eight to 10 terabytes, somewhere in there. So... You know, I just, I gather all the information of what's going to work for your business and then I can put it into a calculator and then it'll help me determine what's going to work best for you guys. So, okay. So I'm going to show you a few other views here. Um, I'll show you some outside views, but I just want to show you one more uh, kind of a neat camera that we have here. We'll get our, this, um, just one thing too, like, it took a little time to load that. Um, we're just using the internet here locally to log into all these systems from all these different locations. But if you're on site, everything just populates immediately like this, okay? So just so that you're aware, and like if you notice any choppiness in the video, again, that's just because we're using the internet to view them remotely. If you're on site, everything would be perfectly smooth for you, okay? So this is kind of a neat shot here. Um, what this customer wanted to do is they kind of just wanted one camera to handle a lot of different things. And so we ended up putting in a nice 5 megapixel. So the 5 megapixel, again, really sharp. Very similar camera that I first showed you looking at the gas pumps. So this is a, a 5 megapixel in a tighter environment. Um, so the zooming capabilities are kind of neat. We can come down here. We've got a little bit of glare off the sun here, or windows com or sun coming in through the windows. Yep, exactly. Yep. But what they wanted to do is now they can come in here, they can see what their cashiers are hitting. They can see what money's coming out of there. They can count the dollar bills. Um, so being able to do things like that, but still see a larger area allows you to cut down on cameras and, uh, you know, save a little bit of money in the long run. So, you know, you can come in here, tell what the cashier's hitting at any point. We can come over here again. You guys can probably read all the. You know, please, please be prepared to show ID with every purchase. Now we got a customer, a lady there. So, and we're seeing about. Uh, I'd say uh, this is a tobacco store inside of Ernie's. 
And uh, we're probably seeing about three quarters of the tobacco stores, just this one camera. And still have the zooming power to get any detail that we need out of it. You can actually set the system up to notify you through an email or a text. Um, you can also, it would show video loss on the camera if there is a video loss. Right. So, um, so it, it's a good idea to maybe do that in an environment where you're not yeah. paying attention to it um, as much. So, right. yep. With the camera system, you can uh, dictate what employees do what to the system. So what that really means is that you can have a cashier so they can maybe log into their computer and maybe they could only see the outside gas pumps cameras. Okay? You could have other people within the business that could see all the cameras. You could have people within the business that could maybe only view the cameras live but not look at recordings. Okay? So you can set the, set the system up to do a lot of different things to dictate who sees what. And so that's an important thing in like schools, um, hospitals, those types of environments that we do. So this here is just some outside shots. I just want to make sure you guys had an idea what some of the outside cameras look like. Um, so I'm going to populate this one and make it look, make it big for you. This is, um, this is the parking lot out in front of Ernie's. Now this is a one megapixel. So very nice shot with a one megapixel. I mean, nice and crisp and clean. Um, but this is seen probably three quarters of the parking lot with one camera. Okay? So... Is that color or black and white? It's color. It's just super oh. sunny there right now. Right. Yep. Sun is good. But yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, a one megapixel. Again, we'll just, I'll show you some of the zooming capabilities of the one. Now these vehicles are probably about 80, 90 feet away from the camera. So just so that you're aware when we start zooming in here. You know, if there was somebody in there, you might be able to kind of see if there was somebody in there. It's a tinted window there, but like on the truck here, you know, we can tell at least that there's somebody, there's nobody in there. Um, and then if we move around the image here a little bit more, you know, you'd be easily be able to identify all these vehicles if you had to. And, you know, you wouldn't be able to get a facial shot of maybe this person that would come out of this car here in a minute or two. But uh, you'd be able to tell what they're wearing and, you know, get at least that from you. And again, we have cameras throughout the facility, so we're going to get a facial shot other places as they move throughout. Are cameras hidden at all? You can do hidden cameras. Um, we use a lot of domes, and the domes kind of look like this. And I can sure pass these around if you want to see them. But the dome style is a discrete camera, so typically mounted you know, up in a ceiling tile or maybe on a wall in a corner. Uh, it just blends in really nice with everything. This is a 10 megapixel one, so this is a pretty expensive one there. Um, but the domes are typically the most discrete, um, but we, we have done you know, uh, cameras that nobody knows about. <laughs> Hiding in the birdhouse. Uh, you can do clocks, you can do fire devices, um, you can do light switches, lots of different things. So, so if you had a camera, say that's our exit of our business, you have a strip over there. Now if you had a camera just generally watching that area, you can see how tall that person is when they left. Yeah. But yeah, they do make that strip. So yes, there's a lot of different things you can do with, uh, you know, secret cameras, so to speak. So yeah, new, new, the new technology where, you know, where well, will come and take over before the camera will go. Um, I would say, you know, I mean, you should be able to get eight to ten years out of most of these cameras, depending on the environment that they're in and those sorts of things. So you can, we can do wireless, and we have a few wireless systems out there, but the best practice is always to get wires to where you need to. And it's good that you brought that up, actually. This camera right here has an SD card built into it. Okay. So you, you can put this wherever you want as long as you have power. Yeah. And then it'll record right onto an SD card that goes right into here. So you're not going to get a whole lot of time out of it. No. But you can set it up for motion and it'll only record when there's motion coming through. Mm -hmm. So then if you had an event, go pop this out, take it to your computer, right. and then play the video right then and there. A couple other things I can show you. Um, 
Let's see. I'll show you this as kind of a nice shot here. I just want to, this is, this is what some people like to do with this system. And let me just find, we'll go like this. We'll use this camera. And we're going to pull it up into these four screens, okay? So this is the same camera. I just brought it into all four screens here so everybody can see it. But uh, this is what you can do with the system. You can come in here, and maybe we want to see, in this view, we want to see people coming and going through this door maybe a little more aggressively, okay? This view, we want to see this back corner because this is where they cut up meat and... We just want to make sure everybody's using the right practices and those sorts of things. So we'll get in here a little bit tighter. And then in this view, we want to see our meat saw down here to make sure no fingers are getting cut off. And, uh, yep. So this is kind of a neat thing that you can do with these systems. You have one camera with four different views. Yep. And so at some gas stations, they use our 10 megapixel cameras and they'll, they'll pull, up, pull, up, pull up the, the camera that's watching the, the pump and they'll populate one over here and then they'll zoom it in on the license plate area here and they'll pop up that same camera and then zoom in on the license plate on this camera and then voila, it's always right there, right in front of you. You don't have to zoom in or anything to get license plates. Yep. So, kind of a neat thing. Again, allowing customers to maybe not have as many cameras as they've had in the past and still get, you know, top of the line clarity. One thing about the residential side, I'll kind of get to that here in a minute. This, this system can go into wherever we want. Hospitals, schools, gas stations, it can go into homes. So if somebody wants a really high-end system at their house, this would be that type of environment. And when we talk about our, um, our residential, and I'll get to that here in just a second, that allows you to just have a smaller type system in a more uh, home environment where it's not as expensive as this would be. Let's go up here. I think this is one of the biggest things about, or best things about the system, is a lot of people struggle going back and finding video. Most of the time it's a pain in the butt and takes a lot of your time to sit there and try to find that video. So with the new with with the Exact Vision system we have here, this is just a really three clicks and we got our video, okay? And so basically what we do is we click click on our magnifying glass, it populates all the cameras, and I'm just going to pick that meat room camera just for ease of use. And let's just say something happened this morning between 6 and say 9 o'clock. So I hit search it logs into Staples, Minnesota system, brings all that information right to my, cam or my computer here. And these little blue lines, these are all the recordings that happen on that camera from 6 o'clock in the morning till, till 9. And so you can come in here, click on the video. Let's go over here and click on that video. And just give it a second here. Another second here. There we go. And there's your video. Again, this would be instantaneous at your place of business. When we're using the internet, it takes a little bit more time to load it. But here's the video, that quick. Okay? Now, if you look at this little green line here, this is like a YouTube video at home. If you guys ever watch videos on YouTube, this is loading the video. Again, at your place of business, that would populate across there like this. It's just taking a little bit more time because of the internet. But what you can do is you can grab your little cursor here, you can fast forward, rewind through all this, you can come in here, you can zoom in on the, the picture. So now, let's just say we wanted to take a picture of this individual. We can save the picture. Um, we can download and export it to a thumb drive or our hard drive on our computer. We can print a picture or burn to a CD or DVD. 
Now this is what you'd want to do, the burning part of it, is if you needed um, a watermarked DVD. Watermarked meaning unedited video, which would hold up in a court of law for you. Okay, so this system does all that for you. Okay, so a lot of different things you can do with this recording part of it. Another big feature that is super nice is this thumbnail search here. So let's just say we were looking for somebody that drove in at a certain time, and I guess we'll just use, uh, we'll let this populate here and I'll, I'll give you an example. But uh, this is going to show a snapshot every so often of that 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock time frame. And so this thumbnail search allows you to look at all these pictures instead of looking at those three hours of video. So let's just say, we we'll see this cart. See this cart that's here, it's there, and it's throughout this cart right here. It's throughout all these images, and now all of a sudden it's gone. So we want to see when that cart got there. So the cart's not, it's there, it's there, it's there. Well, boom, it's not there right here. You click on that, and it's going to play that video from now on. So pretty soon that cart's going to roll in here, and there's your pickup you're looking for, uh, there's a, a person you're looking for, anything like that. So it's just a quick little, quick little feature that allows you to save more time, I guess, so you're not looking at three hours of video. Okay, does that make sense? Well, I'm, I'm just going to show you uh, a quick video here, and this will kind of introduce you to some of the home uh, security with home automation and cameras and those sorts of things. Um, so I'll play that video here, and you guys can just keep eating. And then uh, after this is done, we'll, I'll show you what um, the platform is to use your smartphones and your iPads and everything to log into your, uh, your home system and do all these things that this video will show us. So. Connect to your home like never before with Honeywell's Tuxedo Touch. From the touchpad, tablet, or smartphone, Tuxedo Touch lets you control your security, cameras, locks, lighting, and thermostat. Providing state-of-the-art security, it has a vivid color display and large icons for easy operation. Beyond security, Tuxedo Touch offers you ways to save money and simplify your life. When you use Honeywell Total Connect Remote Services, you can enjoy these benefits from wherever you are. Control your lights, blinds, and thermostat to enhance your lifestyle and save money on your energy bills. Leaving work early? Adjust the temperature from your office so you can return to a comfortable house. Want to let in an unexpected guest? Use your smartphone to disarm the security and unlock the door. Worried about a loved one? Receive video of important events on an iPhone, iPad, or smartphone whenever you're away. Connect to a more comfortable life for your family. Ask about Honeywell's Tuxedo Touch with Total Connect. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to log into um, a system in Fargo, North Dakota. This is a... <clears throat> This is a new home up in Fargo. Um, we do the prey to homes up in Fargo, and so we have a builder, a few builders that we work with up there, and uh, so we put these systems in, and and uh, you know customers come through, and we show them everything, and show them what uh, these uh, this, the security slash home automation system can do. So we're logged right into a home up in Fargo. This is a million dollar house. It's pretty neat, by the way, but. Um, in this house, we have two thermostats. We have a door lock. We have a light switch. Um, we have a camera and a security system. Okay? And so this platform, what you're looking at right now, <clears throat> is what we call Total Connect. And Total Connect is a service that allows you to use your smartphones and iPads and everything to run the system. And so if you were down in Florida on vacation, you want to log into your home and turn up the temperature because maybe your son's coming over to stay the week, you can do that. Pull up Total Connect, 
go right on to <clears throat> right into here and you can raise and lower the temperature in your house okay right from here you can change this I'm not gonna mess around with things a whole lot just because I don't want to mess with the house but uh, this is where you can you know turn it to heat you can turn it to cool you can do anything right here that your thermostat, thermostat can do at your house okay um, this for example here is your schedules so you can come into your thermostat and set up a seven day programmable schedule so a lot of people <clears throat> use their thermostats today for energy control and so they will turn down the heat in their house when they go to work in the morning and then we'll say at five o'clock or four thirty five o'clock they'll have their thermostat go from the the back up to their traditional setting of say 68 degrees so it's warm in their house when they get home but maybe 62 degrees when they go to work during the day so there's a lot of different things you can do with that so seven day programmable is a neat thing um, <clears throat> come back up here um, this is where it kind of displays your locks your switches um, say we had a garage door we wanted to open and close from here that would be displayed in here but for now we just have a lock with a light okay so we want to click on our light connecting to panel <clears throat> and this is where you could come in here you could dim it you could turn it on and off you could lock and unlock your front door so say you had a carpenter coming over to do some work and you don't want to give him a key or put a key over in the tree that's next to the house in the winter so there's footsteps going over to the tree you don't want to do those things so now you can go right to your smartphone unlock the door he can then text you or call you when he's done then you can go ahead and lock the door again and same thing with the security system you can arm and disarm the security system so that he can get into the house so those are some neat things there um, down here um, they actually had an alarm at this house so I'm not sure what was going on there but it looks like um, sensor 12 was the dining room motion so they must have had an agent come in and not this or not turn off the system so there was an alarm in the dining room motion and so what, again, what's nice about this is it shows you everything. Everything's icon driven. It's very straightforward, easy to use, easy to decipher between your different systems here. So right now it's in a disarm state. If I wanted to arm it, I come into our keypad, I enter our code, and boom, done. Okay? So again, very simple. A different icon would come up saying that it is armed away red is kind of the color that they use for armor way so this is more of home video what we want to use at a house okay this video is not the same video that we sh I showed you on the camera system the camera systems cameras are a much higher quality sharper picture those sorts of things okay when we're doing cameras integrated in with security those cameras are more for watching comings and goings, watching your entry door, maybe watching the front of your garage, maybe in the backyard, you know, those sorts of things. It, these cameras are not for parking lots or big, huge warehouses or those sorts of things, okay? So, yeah, it's not, they're not as high, as far as resolution as high quality nor are the field of views as big. You, we can use any analog camera or Honeywell's IP camera, which is this one right here, with the Total Connect system. You know, you may have to use two cameras, maybe one that points out further, and then one that'll kind of handle, you know, if your driveway goes like this, your house sitting over here, have a camera that goes like that, and then have another one that comes over here, you know, but that's kind of what you have to do with these types of cameras if you want to do that, okay? So more for general uh, local comings and goings is how I like to explain these cameras. That video that I sh just showed you was the tuxedo. 
Okay, and that's a um, that's a little keypad, about yay big, and that displays all those cameras right on there. So typically, we'll put those in say a great room or a kitchen area or maybe even a bedroom area, so that if there is somebody out front, you can go to that keypad and see who's out front before you go up to the front door. Okay. So that's what a lot of people like to do with these cameras. They want to view everything internally or from the smartphone and know who's at the front. What you can do is you can do up to six cameras with this system. Okay? So, you know, if you have many doors, you know, typically you're going to do the doors that maybe we're putting a camera there for security purposes. Maybe that's the place in the house where most likely somebody will try to break into. <clears throat> or you just put them in the front entry just so that you can see comings and goings. Go ahead. The security system, it's security number one. Okay? That's why most people put these in, th these systems in, in their homes, is for security. So it's a security system, first of all. And then we're doing home automation on the side, so to speak. Okay? And the home automation just ties in to the security. Okay? So here we have our camera. Down here, what's kind of nice too is we have our events, our rules, our notifications. And what these are is anything that happened to your system. So like for example, garage entry door unlocked. So somebody went onto their smartphone or to the keypad and unlocked that door. So it logs all that. So the other thing would be if somebody broke in the front door, zone one, it would say zone one, entry, forced open. That would set off the system, set off a siren, and the call would be made to the monitoring company. Okay? So that would all be logged on here. Anytime a video clip, or anytime the camera took a video clip would be on here. Anytime somebody armed and disarmed the system would be on here. For a business, that's a big thing. Being able to identify who armed and disarmed the system kind of gives you a, a time frame to put everything together if something did happen and who's responsible if the system didn't get armed at the end of the night and something happened. Okay, so lots of different things. Um, locations, you can have multiple locations on this system. So if you had multiple businesses or if you had a business in your house, you want to run everything through this platform or your smartphone, iPad, you can do that right on here. Again, you can have also different users. The users can have different capabilities also. So maybe you have a son that you want to be able to allow him to arm and disarm the system. He could just do that. He can't maybe look at recordings or unlock the door or other things like that. So you can dictate, again, who does what to the system. Okay? So does that kind of make some sense? This is kind of a neat platform. Um, other things you can do, you can stream weather. So we have the weather on here. Again, go to your smartphone, iPad, anywhere, and see the weather. Okay? So this is Total Connect. This is above and beyond basic security. This allows you to get into home automation, do locks, uh, locks <coughs> thermostats, cameras, lights, those sorts of things. Okay? Now, back to your question. Security is the reason why we, we do all these other things. But basic security, you have your keypad, your panel. You would have door contacts, glass breakage devices, maybe motion sensors. Um, you could do smoke detection, water detection, um, temperature monitoring, highs and lows. So if the temperature drop, temperature drop below 45, the monitoring company be notified. Okay. Those are all the features and everything that you can do with the basic security system. And so typically in most houses, we'll come in and we'll maybe use door contacts. We'll do all your doors. You know, that's always the place of forced entry, first of all. Okay. And then maybe we'll use some motions throughout the system because maybe you're looking to protect your property when you're gone. So motions are a good bang for the buck. Uh, they cover a lot of area. And then um, a lot of times, um, you know, people put a system in 
um, for property protection or personal protection. And so maybe we're doing more of personal protection in this particular house, and so we'll use maybe more glass breakage um, so that the, the homeowner can have the ability to move around their home inside and still have the perimeter of their home protected. Okay, that makes sense? Okay, so those are the devices and features of kind of the basic security. Um, you can add the temperature, like I said, smoke, water, everything like that. It's just, uh, it doesn't change the monthly monitoring of the system or anything. It's just, you know, it's all monitored by the monitoring company. So, again, my example, somebody breaks in the front door. That alarm goes off, the siren goes off in your house. A call is made to the monitoring company, and they go to your call-out list. So each homeowner, business owner, would create a call-out list of who they want contacted <clears throat> in event that something happened. And so they would go, maybe your sales first, a neighbor second, police third. You are in total control of that. So does that help out? Yeah, that is. Okay, yeah, good. <clears throat> so this here is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is our link system. And so this is kind of the newest, latest, greatest. Again, it's more touchscreen driven, um, which is kind of nice, icon driven. Um, and this has the capabilities of doing basic, in, uh, basic intrusion. So we can come into your home. Today we just want to do uh, protect our doors and add some motions and monitor our temperature. Okay, it's all in there. But maybe then you call me a couple years later and say, Eric, you know, um, I really want to be able to uh, turn on my lights. I don't like coming home with, with the house dark. Okay? So now that has all that technology already built right into it. It's called Z-Wave technology. It's a wireless communication. But that has all that Z-Wave cap capabilities to communicate with your light switches. And now we can just uh, go to our smartphone, turn on the lights, have a nice lit up house to walk into.